M104 is a galaxy, which happens to be my favorite Messier object. This is a galaxy called the Sombrero Galaxy because you're looking at it from the side, so you can see this nice disk on its edge, and it kind of looks like a sombrero. It's a kind of latecomer in that Messier actually only catalogued 103 objects, and this is number 104. It got added in the 1920s, and it was kind of the first one that got added on to his original list. The reason why it was added on is because Messier had clearly observed it, he's actually got handwritten notes about it, and so he clearly knew about this galaxy, he just hadn't included it on his list. But because he was kind of associated with this discovery, it was decided to actually add it to the list, and this then led to a little spate of a whole bunch of galaxies and other objects which you know, hadn't quite been added on the list before, people saying, well, here's another one and another one. And so I think the last that galaxy was actually added to the Messier catalogue in the 1960s. This type of disk galaxy has two components to it. It has a spheroidal sort of round bit in the middle, a bulge, and then a flattened disk around it. It's really nice because this disk, you're looking so edge on, and you can just see that it's made of dust, and it actually blocks all of the light from the bulge that's in the center. And I just think it's fascinating. More recently, astronomers have been looking at if we didn't have that dust lane there, how much light would there actually be? And it turns out that the, the disk in this thing is actually quite bright as well. The dust lanes, this disk actually blocks the optical light coming from the stars in the bulge. But when you look at this in the infrared, then all of that dust glows. And so the galaxy looks completely different in the infrared. You can see this distinct disk of dust. I like the way that there's such a thin disk that you can see and then this glowing mass of stars behind it. And then when I first saw the infrared image uh, several years ago when Spitzer was up, so you see this infrared and all of a sudden this disk just glows. So it's like two completely different galaxies. You can really put together the picture of what the galaxy actually is made of just by looking at light from different wavelengths. The Sombrero Galaxy is sufficiently far away that it's actually taking part in the overall expansion of the universe and is travelling away from us at about a thousand kilometres per second. An astronomer at the beginning of the 20th century, a guy called Slipher, measured the velocities of a whole bunch of these what were then called nebulae because they didn't actually know whether they were associated with the Milky Way or whether they were sort of independent galaxies. And this was one of the first ones he measured and measured this figure of around a thousand kilometres per second for it receding away from us. That's a high enough velocity that it clearly can't be associated with the Milky Way because at a thousand kilometres per second it would just escape from the Milky Way entirely. But then Slipher went and measured the velocities of a whole bunch of galaxies and found they were all moving away from us. This whole thing was really only resolved when Hubble again came along and made this famous measurement of associating that velocity with the distance and found that the highest velocity galaxies are also the ones that are furthest away, which you can then naturally fit into a picture of a universe which is expanding away from us. When I look at a picture of the Sombrero Galaxy, which is this kind of beautiful, static, floating thing in space, that thing's mo there's movement everywhere. There is a lot of movement, and it's the, the only reason you don't see that movement is because it's also huge. Typically, galaxies are rotating at hundreds of kilometres per second, so they're actually rotating quite fast. But although the individual stars in there are moving at hundreds of kilometres per second, you'd have to wait for hundreds of thousands of years to actually see anything move because it's an enormously big structure. It's what makes it challenging to try and understand what's going on in galaxies, because we know everything's in motion, but because the timescales are so long, we have to try and come up with clever ways to infer what those motions actually are. So actually a lot of the attraction of the subject is trying to come up with clever ways to figure out exactly what's going on when we can't see this great ballet that's going on on these huge timescales. Does it look like a sombrero? I think it kind of does. <laughs> you can pick it up and put it on, but there's not the big top of the sombrero. <laughs>